Don't turn your video into a PowerPoint slideshow, but if you're explaining a complex topic, like a product review, bullet point lists and tables can communicate a lot of useful information to your viewer. iMovie and Final Cut Pro both have built-in rolling credits titles, but sometimes they're just too restrictive. In this little video, I'll show you how to use Keynote to quickly add these to your iMovie and Final Cut projects, including animation, sound effects, and creative use of partial transparency to help with readability. Okay, let's start out with the uh, bullet points. And uh, I'm not going to type in the, uh, the text from scratch here. That's just a waste of your time. I'm just going to point out the important things that you have to do in setting this up. The first thing you'll notice is the green background. And the way we get that is we go into Format, and then the background, Color Fill, and we simply select the green. The purpose of this is for keying. We want to be able to use the chroma key uh, function within iMovie or Final Cut Pro to make uh, much of this area transparent. The second thing you'll notice is the bullets and the text title both have a color fill. And the reason for that is if you are using the chroma key on these type of text slides and you have video playing behind this, uh, it can be very hard to read the text. So uh, in the case of the border here, um, you'll notice that the text color is white. I generally like to use white uh, so that way it, it shows up and the style is a fill with a color fill and in this case I chose black okay and you don't want to choose anything with any green in it because that's going to confuse the chroma key and then I set the opacity to in this case uh, you know it's it's your choice you don't have to make this opaque you can use solid colors as well but I like the background to bleed through a bit uh, in these areas here. So I set the opacity to around 60% or so. And then I did the same thing here um, with the, um, the bullet points. This is just a text block uh, set up as, uh, as bullets here. You can see that the text type uh, is of type uh, text bullets. In most cases I use the little clover leaf here and in the case of the very last bullet here I change that to a minus sign. Uh, Keynote allows you to customize this. But once again I used uh, a black background which ends up looking kind of grayish with the 60% transparency. The next thing um, we're going to have a look at is the animation. Okay, you, it's always nice with these kinds of uh, text slides to, to animate these bullet by bullet, to have them uh, build so that uh, the, the user is always looking at the latest one. They, their attention is focused on the latest bullet, but yet they can see the prior points. And uh, we're going to go up here and we're going to select animation. And... Um, we're going to do a build in and uh, I happen to choose the swoosh which will um, kind of uh, come in from above like this. Um, you, can, you can change this to whatever you like. There's, there's uh, just all kinds of uh, different types of animations that you can use here but I, I just happen to use swoosh. And then most of these animations, uh, you can set some sort of duration. Um, I like about one second or so, and I have it uh, coming in uh, from the left. The important thing here is we want to deliver it bullet by bullet. Okay, you can do it all at once, or, or um, you can highlight it, but uh, I think a, a bullet uh, type animation works, uh, works pretty well. Uh, for a build out, I did both the, uh, the bullet points and the title. They're both going to uh, move out 
uh, after when I want them to go away, rather than having them just uh, uh, doing a, a hard cut, I have them doing a move out animation, which will go from left to right and have them just uh, disappear. So uh, that there we go. There's the move out of the animation. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty much it. That's uh, all you really need. And then we'll look at uh, integrating this with iMovie or Final Cut Pro after we look at the other um, uh, text types. The next text we're going to look at um, is uh, a table. And um, this particular table came from a product review I did of the Zoom F2 versus the Zoom H1. And it's a very technical review. And uh, the bullets here go over all the important attributes of these two alternatives that, that uh, the consumer has to pick from and allows me to display uh, pretty much all the attributes of these products here. And um, similar with the text, the, uh, I want to do a build-in animation. And I happen to like this anvil. Um, what happens on the anvil is it comes down and makes this kind of uh, uh, little smoke as if it's hitting the ground. It's, it's pretty dramatic, but uh, I've kind of uh, grown to like it over the years. I've been using this one for years. I use just a little bit longer animation on this one, and uh, you need to choose whether you want it delivered uh, by row or by column, and it depends upon when you're doing your voiceover or you're doing your actual elucidation of these different uh, rows and columns of this uh, matrix where you're comparing something together. It all depends upon whether you're covering things by column or by row. Um, in my product reviews, I like to do things by row, by attributes. So I say, okay, um, here's the H1N weighs 60 grams, the F2 is 32 grams. And, and now we, we understand very quickly that the F2 is roughly half the weight of the H1N. And so uh, I like to do these things uh, row by row. Uh, the other thing to note with the tables is the partial transparency is a little harder to achieve here uh, because uh, um, uh, Keynote does not allow you uh, to manipulate the transparencies of these cells very easily. So if we go in here and uh, we select a bunch of these cells and we want to format the cell, um, you can see we have, we can select a fill here, but there's no transparency style. So we could, we could mimic it by, by um, selecting a dark green color or something like that. So there are ways to work around that. Um, but it's, uh, it's not quite as uh, straightforward as it is with the bullet points. So that's how you do the, uh, the, bolt, the uh, tables. Next, let's look at a um, uh, scrolling, uh, scrolling text. And this might be for credits at the end of a video, or maybe you're doing a sing-along where you want to do uh, the lyrics of a song or something like that that you want to scroll by. And the first thing you want to do is you want to create a very large text box. So at the bottom of the screen here, uh, you'll see I've created a text box and I've put all the text that, uh, that I want to uh, go into uh, these scrolling credits down below here. It's a little hard to see because it's, uh, it's kind of white on white. Um, but you simply create one text box, you, you make it the, the size of the text you want and the color of the text you want and all the various justification and, and all that kind of good stuff. And then you position it where you want the scrolling to start. And in order to do that, um, you have to zoom out a bit. So view, zoom, and then you zoom out a couple times. I find these keyboard shortcuts, uh, command less than, to be pretty helpful. Uh, so you zoom out a bit so you can see uh, what the heck you're looking at. So I'll go ahead and do that. You can zoom out quite a bit, um, but just zoom out enough where you can position this where you want it to start. Um, normally the scrolling text starts at the bottom, but you could use the left or the right or the top or whatever you wanted to do. This is a very flexible way of doing things with Magic Move. 
Uh, and then uh, if you want to add some graphics or other uh, objects, uh, elements that you want to scroll with the text, uh, you can add those in as well. I put these together in a group. So arrange, um, it's already in a group, so I could ungroup this. Um, and then uh, now you can see I have a separate uh, graphics object here that's going to scroll uh, with the text. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, regroup that again. And then you're going to add a magic move animation. Make sure you don't have any objects selected. If you have an object selected and you go to the animate menu, um, it's going to assume you want to animate that object. So you have to click outside any of your text and graphics in order to set the animation. And the crucial thing here is we are going to use magic move. And Magic Move is a, is a very powerful animation tool within Keynote uh, that you can use to uh, animate uh, size, color, um, text, all, all kinds of stuff. But we're just going to use it to basically scroll this text uh, upwards. And select your duration of the uh, Magic Move. And I selected 24 seconds here because I created a voiceover and I wanted this text scrolling to match that 24 second voiceover. You can set your acceleration. I prefer to not accelerate. That's the little bit of speed up and slow down at the beginning and ending of the scroll. And you want this transition to start automatically uh, with no delay. So once you have that, uh, you simply duplicate the slide. Okay, and the way you do that is you right click on the slide and you just click on duplicate and it'll create a new copy of that, an identical copy. And all you're going to do with this identical copy is you're going to move that text box to where you want it to be at the very end. And during the course of those 24 seconds from this slide to this slide, um, it's going to move that text and graphics and whatever else you have in there uh, slowly up over a 24 second uh, period. And uh, there we go. So that's all we really need to do. It's really pretty straightforward. And our, our next step is to export as a movie. So uh, we're going to do all three of these animations in one. We can break the movie in, apart. We can use the break function within uh, iMovie or Final Cut Pro to break this up. Uh, but we're going to do a, a file export to movie. And uh, you want the playback to be self-playing. You want all, I'm, I want all the slides in this case. Normally I get rid of all these delays. You can cut them out uh, with iMovie or Final Cut Pro. It's not a big deal. Um, but uh, choose your frame rate. Uh, I always use the Apple ProRes 422 high quality. And then choose your resolution. You, you can do a 1080p, a 720, or if you want a 4K, which is what I wanted, you select custom and then just type in the 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160. And then uh, choose where you want this to go and hit export and, uh, and off you go uh, and your movie will be created. And then we're going to import that into iMovie or Final Cut Pro. So let's have a look at that next. Well, I will use uh, iMovie. The techniques are pretty much the same except for the chroma keying. So on my left, I have my iMovie window and on my right, uh, I have our um, movie file that we generated from Keynote. So I can just drag this uh, um, either right into the library or onto the timeline itself. So let's, uh, let's do this uh, from the library because we just want a part of this. So we'll uh, only drag on the section that has the bullet points. When we do that, um, you can see that uh, iMovie defaults to a cutaway here. And all we have to do is change this to a green uh, blue screen. And uh, voila, there we have our bullet text. You can see, um, I might have made this a little too opaque. You can kind of see my glasses through the background here, um, but it's not uh, tremendously uh, apparent that this is uh, opaque. Now, if I wanted to take uh, another section of this, let's say the, uh, the bullets, I can slide our selector over 
and uh, just get the bullet build and drag that onto the timeline here. And uh, now I need to go in and change that to a green and blue screen. And uh, there we go. And it appears uh, with our uh, little explosions and, and so on. Let's get rid of this for now. And um, what if we wanted to um, have some space in between these? Quite often, you bring up these, uh, these bullets and uh, you want to talk about them for a while, but then go away so we can very easily uh, break these into bullet by bullet points. Uh, or if we need to change the timing on this, um, we can just go to the last frame here and uh, add a freeze frame. And now we can extend this uh, as long as we want. And uh, this will um, give us as much time with that bullet uh, as we need in order to synchronize uh, with our voiceover. So uh, I don't recommend that you add the freeze frame in the middle of these. Uh, when I've done this with iMovie before, iMovie seems to get horribly confused. So do a break, make a separate uh, clip, and then add the freeze frame onto the end to change the timing, okay? Uh, so that's, uh, that's how you set up these bullet points. Uh, nothing to it. So now let's have a look at uh, how we might add in our uh, sound effects. Uh, they really make a, a big difference with these kinds of animations. What I find the easiest in iMovie is to find out where you want it to begin. Uh, so you can see on the screen here, it's uh, just the, the bullet point is just coming into view. And then what you want to do is set a marker right there with the, with the M key. So that's where we want to position our sound effects. And uh, this one I think I got, uh, Swoosh, I think I got from the YouTube uh, audio effects library. So uh, I'm just going to drag it in from the finder and it will align perfectly on uh, the mark that we just set here. So if we play this back now, um, it's pretty apparent and uh, probably a little too loud. We should probably tone that back just a little bit. Um, but uh, the timing looks to be spot on. And then uh, to do more of these, you simply uh, copy and paste. So we can, uh, uh, there I just uh, copied it, and now we can paste it uh, right about there. And then each of these has to be pasted in individually. There's no mass way of, uh, of doing this. So uh, now we have our, uh, our nice uh, zooming uh, bullets here, our, our bullets that are coming in with this swiping motion and our sound effects that uh, go with them. Okay, now it's uh, Final Cut Pro's turn. And so I have uh, Final Cut up on the screen here. And I can take this uh, exact same movie file. I didn't have to do anything to regenerate this and uh, just throw it uh, right on the timeline with my the, the very same um, base clip as I had before. And uh, let me go ahead and trim this down since I put it directly on the timeline. Okay, now I just have, uh, have our nice uh, build here. So let me go ahead and do the green screen keying. Uh, let me first uh, make this window a little bit bigger here. So we'll go ahead and uh, bring up our effects. And uh, this is under keying, uh, and it's called the keyer. And we simply drag this uh, right on top. And uh, there we go. Um, it looks just like iMovie. Um, just, and just as with iMovie, we could add sound effects along here uh, wherever the little uh, boom noise is required uh, with the dusting. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's exactly the same uh, MOV file uh, that we created and used with iMovie. So uh, this technique works interchangeably. The only thing that's different is setting the overlay uh, green screen type. So we could do the, uh, the same thing here. We could extend this out and, uh, 
and instead change this to our scrolling credits um, just by changing the window that we're displaying here. And uh, now you can see that we have this uh, nice uh, scrolling credits. Whoops, I got my sound on here. Let me go ahead and mute that. And now you can see the little graphics scrolling up here with the text. That would be pretty hard to do with uh, the titles. Uh, this could be done in Final Cut, but it would be kind of a pain in the butt. And since it's so easy to do with, uh, with Keynote, uh, even though I've been using Final Cut now for about a year, in addition to iMovie, I still do use Keynote with it. There are some things that are just easier to do this way. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And if you learned something from this video, click like or subscribe below.